Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to another video of my channel. I am Kishal. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, so in this video, I am going to talk about what are the benefits that I am getting from PMRF fellowship and what are the responsibilities that we PMRF fellowship holders has to carry out. So a lot of people used to think that we are only getting the benefits, but there are a lot of responsibilities also uh, that also we need to do and we need to go through a rigorous review process annually. Uh, and after that, there is rating that that is to given to us and based on that is decided whether our fellowship will be carried forward for the next year or not. So everything in detail, I'm going to discuss that what are the benefits that I get both the scholarship and the additional benefits that you are getting and at the same time, the different responsibilities that we need to carry out being a PMRF fellow in this particular video. So if you want to know in detail about it, stay tuned with the video till end and before starting the video, as I always say, don't forget to hit the like button if you have liked this video and please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever I upload a video, you will get an instant notification. Without further delay, let's get started into today's video. So let's first talk about what are the benefits that you'll be getting uh, being a PMRF research fellow. The first benefit is your higher stipend or higher scholarship that you are getting monthly from the government of India. So being a PMRF fellow, you'll be getting 70,000 per month uh, during your initial days of PhD. And then after that, you'll be getting 75,000 per month. And finally, in the final year, you'll be getting 80,000 per month. So if you are a direct uh, PMRF fellow, after your MTech, then you'll be getting this stipend for four years. First two years, 70,000 per month, third year, 75,000 per month, and final year, 80,000 per month. If you are a direct PhD after your BTech, and if you are a direct PMRF fellow, then you will get stipend for five years. Two years, 70,000 per month, two years, 75,000 per month, and finally, 80,000 per month. And finally, if you're a lateral uh, you know, PMRF fellow, like you have joined PhD, and after one year, you got selected for uh, for PMRF fellowship, then you will get this fellowship for three years. First year, 70,000 per month, second year, 75, and last year, 80,000 per month. So the idea is that if you are an MTech, uh, MTech uh, guy and you have converted uh, to PhD, then government will give you uh, PMRF fellow for your first four year only. And if you are a direct PhD after your BTEC, then government will give you PMRF fellowship for five years. For the students who have already completed MTech, government of India wants you to complete your PhD by fourth year. So that's why you, he, uh, government of India is giving you PMRF fellowship till fourth year. Now, what will happen if you can't complete it uh, till your fourth year? Then after your fourth year, your stipend will go down directly from 80,000 to 15,000 rupees per month. So yeah, that is one thing that also you have to keep in mind that if you can't complete your uh, PhD within four years, then your stipend won't be stopped. But yeah, you won't be getting the regular fellowship also. So now it is the regular fellowship after the uh, recent revised guideline. It's 37,000 uh, per month for JRF and I think 45 or something uh, per month for SRF. But, but for PMRF fellowship, after uh, fourth year, you'll be getting 15,000 per month. So this is also something that you have to keep in mind that we are getting benefits obviously for the first four years. But if I if we can't complete our PhD within four years, then our uh, salary or stipend will be drastically goes down to 15,000 per month. The next benefit is PMRF contingency fund. Uh, so this is a fund of two lakhs rupees per annum uh, we used to receive uh, from PMRF fellowship that we can use in different uh, purpose uh, during our PNP, uh, PhD tenure. Now there is a revised guideline recently released by IIT Kharagpur and also government of India. And now I will uh, show you that PDF file and I will explain you where are the places I can use my contingency fund uh, during my PhD tenure. So let's have a look there. Okay, so this is the revised guideline for PMRF research grant or PMRF uh, contingency fund uh, that I was just explaining you. Uh, so this is a revised guideline that we have received from our institution but i hope this is for every institute this is applicable for every institutions so as i was saying a pmrf uh, fellow will get annual research grant of rupees to, uh, two lakhs rupees for five years and uh, that is 10 lakhs um, but remember this five years is for the btech students who is coming directly for the phd for other students like mtech student or uh, whoever is getting uh, the, the the lateral uh, pmrf fellowship for him or her it will be maximum four years now a fellow can utilize this grant every year up to up to completion of their fellowship or the date of phd th uh, thesis submission whichever is earlier now if you can't spend the research grant in in every year the unspent grant in each year will be carried forward to the next year 
but there is a maximum ceiling of of the of the carry forward amount that is maximum of 2000 uh, 2 lakhs rupees will be carry forwarded so suppose you have uh, more than 2 lakhs rupees and you can't utilize that fund this year then 2 lakhs rupees will be carry forward to the next year but other the rest amount will be lost now fellow should strictly follow institute rule while uh, spending the grant so here is the difference that uh, every fellow has to you know follow the institute rule uh, in which he or she is uh, pursuing their phd uh, for processing the grant uh, for spending it to different purposes so here is the differences so based on different institutions and their rule the way you will be you know um, spending the grant may differ now also you know if in order to use this grant you need you know approval from your supervisor now these are the different cases you can use your uh, this uh, pmrf uh, resource grant or pmrf contingency fund so that is uh, the first case is one travel uh, one foreign travel per year for presenting your research paper oral or poster in any conference or attending any workshop that is useful for the pmrf fellow now pmrf fellow can avail international travel support only after successfully completion of the comprehensive exam so because in iit kharagpur we have a comprehensive exam and even for regular uh, fellow also uh, regular phd fellow also after comprehensive exam only you will get the uh, regular institute uh, kind of assistant uh, fund uh, for the for the conference visit or any workshop visit so that's why for pmrf also you have to you know you have to fulfill the, fulfill this requirement because this is the institute rule that only after completing your comprehensive exam you will be you know you will be getting this uh, you will be able to use this uh, travel travel grant that is you are that you are getting from pmrf now institute rule should be followed again here travel and what are the cases you can use this fund uh, the first one is registration fee the next is your airlines uh, you know airlines uh, fee or the ticket price then there is a per diem that you know per day institute will give you some money uh, for your food uh, accommodation travel local travel and all uh, visa fee and travel insurance local travel in india and you know uh, and some other cases that you can also do and also you know you need a justification from the, from your supervisor and also from the dsc committee uh, if you want to attend a workshop uh, because you know as 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 is mentioned here that you have to prove that this workshop is useful for the pmrf fellow so that's why you need approval from the supervisor as well as the uh, dsc committee member and also it's noted that fellow can't avail more than one uh, foreign travel uh, he or she can avail it and also it's noted that a fellow can avail more than one travel uh, foreign travel if sufficient grant is available in the research grant so suppose you have 4 lakhs rupees and typically in a conference you need 2 lakhs rupees so rest 2 lakhs also you can use and for that if needed you can go go to another conference uh, but for that also your dsc recommendation dsc committee recommendation is needed uh, in order to you know avail more than one uh, foreign travel now domestic also if the second thing is domestic travel so do, for, in order to present your paper in a in a national conference in india or some workshop that is happening in india uh, which is useful for pmrf fellow again you can you know you can you can use the fund for the for the domestic travel and again for registration fee uh, and and ac2 tier travel that is their accommodation food local travel all the things are same uh, but here you know you don't have any uh, flight uh, ticket just the difference is you, you have to use it for a train the third is uh, travel support for short term national international visit for collaboration research work so suppose you are collaborating with some some company or some institution in foreign new york to visit there for short term basis uh, then also you can use it but you need prior approval from the dean uh, and also dsc committee will decide the duration of visit and all so dsc recommendation also has to be sent to the dean and then after getting all the approval uh, you can use the money to uh, go to uh the colla uh, colla collaboration space or the place where you are you are doing the collaboration and you can visit the place and do your work so these are the things you know that is related to your you know travel to different conferences or workshop the next is you know if you, if you are willing to have any membership in any international or national professional societies then also maximum up to 2 you can use uh, per year uh, for any kind of membership Uh, if you are if you uh, if you are willing to purchase any consumables including stationary item and postal charges there also you can use this money purchase of laptop and tablet that is 
quite popular and everybody is trying to do that that using this money you can buy a laptop or a tablet but you know you can only purchase this only once during your tenure of PMRF so you can only buy once uh, a laptop and uh, you know if the scholar leaves the institute within a one year of the procurement without completing PhD then that item that laptop or tablet you have to return to the uh, institution finally you know any kind of software desktop computer workstation spare parts anything if you want to want to you know buy for your experiment uh, then you can purchase it but these items will remain to institute property now here is one thing that all purchase rules uh, of the institute has to be followed for the procurement so whenever you are buying any any item uh, that has to follow the procurement rule of the institution and that also varies from institute to institute so uh, the procurement procedure here at IIT Kharagpur will be much different than IIS or IIT Bombay uh, so all the purchased uh, item has to be you know entered in a register and also all of these things is there you have to you know get a sign from your supervisor and also the, it has to go to the account section and all so uh, this whole procedure of buying a laptop or this consumable item are very complicated maybe i'll make a separate video after some time and these are the other things they that also you can uh, you know buy the different you know sample fabrication test and all so these things also you can you can buy uh, using this uh, grant so in, in, in a nursery if I will say that you can use this fund uh, for basically for two things first of all you can buy these different consumable items and laptops and tablets so that is one thing and other thing is that you can you can travel to different conferences or workshop and for that also for the travel uh, purpose also you can this uh, use this um, uh, PMRF research grant or PMRF contingency fund so these are the main two benefits a PMRF research fellow is to get uh, so that they have a higher stipend or scholarship and secondly they have this PMRF contingency fund which uh, they can use in different uh, purposes which I have just uh, explained to you and apart from that it's a very prestigious uh, fellowship that you can get during your PhD tenure. Now coming to different responsibilities and duty uh, that you have to do. The first thing is that you have to do your research very aggressively and rigorously. So as I was saying you that you know the PMRF fellowship will be getting from government of India till your fourth year only and government expect you that you will be finishing your PhD by fourth year. So from the very first day of your PhD you have to start doing your research and you have to aggressively publish paper into different conferences and channels. So that is something that you have to do and annually we have we have a review uh, meeting or we have to go through a review process where a committee will be formed uh, for, a, for a, a PMRF fellow and that committee will evaluate your progress uh, for last one year and there they expect you uh, expect from you uh, at least some publishable work and it's better if you have already published a uh, paper and now I'll come to that review process later but yeah that is the case so that is the first thing that you have to do that uh, you have to do rigorously your research and at least one paper you have to publish yearly the second responsibility or a duty that we have to you know carry out every year is that we have to do uh, external TSC outside IIT in some college or university and the idea is that you have to transfer your knowledge to the society to, to different other people who, uh, or students who are not part of IITs and, and through this uh, external TSC program the students who are not from uh, these privileged institutions like IITs and ISC they also gain some knowledge from us. Now here it is mentioned in the guideline that you have to do one hour class per week that means four hour class per month that means 48 hours per year but they say it 50 hours uh, that is the cap you have to fulfill. Now what is the problem here is that these colleges uh, you know coordinating with them everything you have to done by yourself. So institution won't take any responsibility you have to find a college you have to talk with uh, the authority there in that college you, and you have to finalize the course that you'll be teaching whether you will teach in the online mode or offline mode everything you have to do uh, institute won't coordinate with any of the organization so that is the you know status still now and there you know student is to suffer a lot because you know uh, surrounding 
uh, any particular IIT. So first of all, these IITs like IIT Kharagpur, IIT Kanpur, they are not in the main city. So it's very difficult to find out a college nearby to uh, to the IIT uh, premise. And that's why, you know, student is to, uh, you know, travel a long way to take a class uh, to different institutions. But yeah, this is very, this is a mandatory thing that you have to do that you have to fulfill 50 hours of uh, external TSE uh, before your review process. And you have to submit, uh, you know, kind of uh, proper documents uh, justifying that you have you have done the external TSE for uh, for 50 hours. And what will happen if you can't fulfill this requirement of 50 hours uh, per year? Uh, as as external TSC, uh, so then your you know your your stipend will will be deducted and you'll get thirty five thousand per month uh, from the from the next year. So that's why it's very important that you will fulfill your requirement of external TSC. Now finally, I'll give you a rough idea or rough overview about the review process that a PMR fellow has to go through every year. So every year, uh, you know, a specific IIT will be given the responsibility to conduct the review process for all the PMRF fellow uh, in the country. And they used to conduct it twice, once uh, during this uh, May or April this time uh, and, and once uh, during the December time. So uh, if you remember that, you know, uh, PMRF fellows are selected twice uh, in, a, in a calendar year. So that's why the review also is to happen. Uh, twice. So in every review process, uh, the last one year performance of the PMRF fellow is being evaluated. So, you know, first what you have to do is there is a portal, PMRF portal and we all, whoever is the PMRF fellow, we have an account there. So before the review process, you have to submit your uh, research proposal there. Then what are the done or, or, or kind of a progress report you have to submit that what are the research work that you have done for last one year and what is the progress of that, where it is submitted or whether, whether it is accepted or not or whether it is under revision or not. So everything you have to submit there and also your guide or supervisor also has to uh, submit their uh, letter of recommendation. Now what happens is that one time slot will be given to you where you will be meeting the committee who will evaluate your performance. There you have to present your work. Uh, like around 10 minutes of presentation you have to do and then the committee will ask you different questions from the presentation and also some additional questions like you know what are your future plan or maybe you know whether you have you have completed the external TSE requirement or not. So these are things that uh, that will be asked by the committee and after your review process will be done the committee will give you a rating out of five uh, scale. So there are five rating that is possible. One is one that is really really good if you have done. Two means also satisfactory uh, work that you have done. 3A uh, is, the, is the next rating that means uh, you know your performance is average. 3B, 3C are uh, you know kind of alarming things. If you are getting 3B and 3C most likely yours you know PMRF fellowship will be stopped. So that's why you know it's very important that you at least get 3A. So if you get 3A uh, then you have another chance. If you get 3A for two times then your uh, scholarship will be you know stopped. But 3B, 3C if you get your scholarship will be immediately stopped. So that's why try to get one or two and that's why I'm saying that at least one paper uh, or at least one publishable work if you have you are in a uh, safe zone. So this is how the review process used to be done every year and it's a misconception that if you are a PMRF fellow once you will be there for four years. If you don't do work, uh, satisfactory work uh, throughout the year your PMRF uh, fellowship might get stopped. and you might get uh, start getting the normal fellows. Yeah, that's it guys. That's it about the video. I have tried to explain you what are the benefits uh, we are getting as a research fellow at the same time, what are responsibilities or duties that uh, we need to satisfy every year before the review process. And I also have given you a rough idea about what is the review process of PMRF fellow and what are the cases your PMRF fellowship might get stopped. That also I have to explain. So I hope uh, whoever will be applying for PMRF fellowship uh, this time, and whoever has a lot of confusion regarding everything, I have tried to clarify in this video. So let me know if you have any additional question or comment uh, so that I can answer them. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you are new to this particular channel, please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you will get instant notification whenever I upload a video. That's it about this video. I'll meet you in the next video. Until then, bye.